I have not done a makeup empties of the year video and I don't know how long and you know, you wanna know something sick? <laughs> Even though I haven't been doing those videos, do I have my 2021 makeup empties also in a bag? Like a hoarder, like I just can't get rid of this stuff. What's wrong with me? Old habits die hard, I guess. But I thought I would talk about my 2022 makeup empties with you guys run through. Actually, the makeup I used up, I do have some other regular empties I'm gonna tack on at the end. It's a lot of candles, a lot of soap, <laughs> a lot of my normal regular stuff. But I know some of you guys really like empties. Thought I would put that at the end. So if you don't wanna see that, we're mostly gonna be talking about the makeup and I mostly just wanna like finally purge myself of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Plus Plus it's a good reminder, makeup takes a really fucking long time to use up. Like I don't necessarily buy all of my makeup with the intention of using it up, but there are some products that, you know, I like to do that with. A lot of face products like foundations, primers, concealers, and even some eye products. So it'll be fun to go through, see what I've actually used up, what fulfilled its life all the way till completion. You know what I mean? So let's just get into it. Okay, well, it's a lot tinier than I expected, even with having that bag, but we're gonna start from like how I would apply stuff. So I have three all mini primer type products. So one, this one I actually used up very, very fast and completely naturally, no like trying to use it up. And this is from Valentino. This is their V Lighter is what they call it. It's in the shade Rosa. And I've been using this more as a primer. It has a luminosity to it, but I don't find that it makes me actually like dewy. Like my actual skin isn't like moist to the touch. So it's like this perfect mix for my oily skin. And I feel like it also could controls my oil throughout the day. So I'm not having issues with like tons of oil breaking through, like just normal amounts, not like extra, which some primers can do that. So I absolutely love this. This sample convinced me to buy the full size. So I love, love, love this. And I actually will have another one of these empty very, very soon. And I even cut into it. That's how much I like this product. Another mini primer, this is the strobe cream. And again, this is similar. Actually, all of these are similar. I use them kind of as primer primers, but they're also like luminizers. So you could use them however you want to. This strobe cream from MAC is in the shade pink light and it was okay. Like it was fine, but I didn't find at all like the same love like I have for the Valentino. I did feel like I got a little oily. This had like a bit of a pink glow to it, but it's like pink, pink, not like a light rosy hue, <laughs> if that makes sense. So this I wouldn't purchase again. I didn't purchase the sample, but you get what I mean. And then last RIP back. Becca, this is the backlight priming filter and it was one of my goals to use this thing up because Becca's no longer around and I was having this in my collection and this is okay. I like the purple one actually from Becca more than this. That was such an amazing primer. This one was thicker. It had this like kind of golden hue and I did like it, but I'm glad that it's gone. Like I'm glad I finished it up. It felt good, but I wouldn't like seek this one out. I wouldn't seek honestly anything out from Becca at this point just because it's getting kind of old. Even that purple primer I love so much, like if I found out a good deal, I wouldn't get it because it's just, you know, we're getting, <laughs> we're getting past the point. It's gonna be 2023. And that stuff I feel like is starting to get old. So glad I moved this out. It feels good. Um, and this is still a mini too. Even though this is bigger than those other ones, this was still a mini product. So those are the primers that I used up this year. <laughs> Surprisingly, I have two foundations. I'm really proud of these actually. I mean, anytime I'm wearing makeup, I'm definitely wearing foundation. And I have a feeling I'll have even more foundation empties going into 2023 because I have quite a few things like on their last legs but of course I used up one of my Yensa I love this foundation I will say um I went to Disneyland recently and it did not hold up uh the way I really wanted it to in general like for many of the days when I was like out and about I don't know um even my mom was like mm, your makeup doesn't look that great so I was like what the fuck that being said I've been using it more with a sponge to try to get like a lighter coverage I'm definitely just trying not to have my skin hold makeup in a way that looks makeup-y. But anyway, I still love this. I am using one currently and I have a backup of it and I think that I'll be enjoying and using it. But I am excited this year to try out just some different foundations. I wanna try some different textures, different coverages, like just different everything. I really am excited for that journey. I wanna find some stuff that looks really great on my skin. I feel like as I'm aging and I have texture and just all these things, it's a different game and there's nothing wrong with that game I just need the right tools to equip myself okay 
day so that I could feel my best and look my best, you know? So anyway, not saying anything necessarily bad about this, but I definitely, I feel the winds of change, you know? But um, this I used all the way up. Look at that, flat so flat the other kind of foundation product i used up is from salt new york so you don't see it in here i did repurchase this as well i actually have one as a backup and one i'm using it's actually the foundation i'm wearing today i do have powder on and stuff but i've fallen more and more in love with the salt new york i think especially during the colder months i've just i can handle a little bit more moisture but this is the sneaky balm i use the shade n12 which there is a lighter shade than that now i love that this is just really undetectable like when i'm talking about foundations that i don't want to be seen on my skin um, or i don't want them to look cakey or really emphasize texture or fine lines and all that this just does a really great job if you haven't tried it and you don't have super oily skin i think it might be a great one if you have oily skin, it might work for you. Again, I have oily skin, but I just warn you that this will be dewy. So you need to like that look or be willing to like add powder or that type of stuff. I love that I can use this with a foundation brush and it still looks good because we all know that when I use a foundation brush, I'm usually sacrificing the look of my foundation for convenience and fastness. <laughs> Quickness maybe is a better word there. <laughs> but with this one, I actually really like it almost better than the sponge because it kind of dies down some of the dewiness and gives me more coverage and I've really been loving it. I've been using the new one that I picked up and I do, when I use this consistently, I do go through it pretty fast, which is kind of nice. I mean, these aren't super expensive. It's $16 per pan. They're doing a deal right now, but I guess they always do this one. You guys let me know that they always do some type of deal, like either buy two, get one free, but they also have one going on buy three, get three free, which definitely makes their products even more affordable. It is just pans, but I just love it. I'm, I'm really into this product right now. I was into it when I got it kind of moved away from it during summer months I feel like and then you know finished up at the end of the year so really have been enjoying this one enough to repurchase that definitely says something to me when I have just such a big collection and I'm trying so many products all the time so really love that really happy to use it up also and I think that's like the second salt New York product I've used up ever uh, because I also used up a contour a while ago like maybe maybe it's in my 20 uh, let's see <laughs> is it in my 2022 makeup oh my gosh it literally is <laughs> This is hoarder status. Like this is, what are we doing? Here it is, <laughs> light medium contour. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I only have one concealer in here and that is from Tarte. This is the C Hydro Sealer. I uh, barely remember this to be honest. I think I used this mostly in 2021 and then kind of finish it up at the beginning of 2022. So I think that's part of why I don't remember. But I, I you know, I got a good decent amount in there. It's kind of hard with doe fits like this. Like, oh no, it's dry. <laughs> it's dry. <laughs> I felt like although this color looks maybe like a little orange, like that's always what I thought when it would go on, it always looked nice and it was fine. Like it was a fine concealer. I don't have any issues with it, but nothing that makes me want to like repurchase it. So yeah, <laughs> not much to say about that, but only one concealer that I truly feel like I used up all the way. I feel like brow products are always a staple of any type of video like this because you actually go through brow products or I do anyway. Most people do. If like mascaras, eyeliners even can be a lot of things you go through. They just actually get daily, daily use and they're kind of the nuisance things you have to repurchase so you hope that they're not too expensive. And thinking about brands, you know, uh, some of the brands that I feel like I think should be dying out <laughs> <laughs> uh, based off of like how every brand feels like it's dying out. When brands have products like these, like you don't think about them a lot, but if they're selling lots of brow products, lots of mascaras, those are like their top sellers. I guess financially it kind of makes sense like, oh wow, they stay in business because people repurchase this shit constantly. Whereas if a brand, you know, is known for blushes or known for, I don't know, even lip products, those things take a little bit longer to use up if someone's actually using them up. So it makes sense that they would need to come out with more products, like new things to be selling and making those sales as much, if that makes sense. I don't know, that's just connecting. I'm just thinking about that in this moment but I had three of the Rowan brow pencils. I would never pay the actual price for these Rowan brow pencils. Well, I'll never say never as Justin Bieber says, but I don't think it's likely that I would pay like $26 for this brow pencil. It's a nice skinny pencil. It's a little bit harder. Um, so you really get those like hair like strokes, but I get these from BoxyTerm for like five bucks. So I have a bit of a backup stash. It's good to know that I gone through three for this year. I have switched up my brow routine and now with my pink hair, we'll see. <laughs> 
how it switches up. I feel like that is something I, I do switch up a lot. Like sometimes I find this perfect moment, my brows are looking so good, and then the moment passes and I'm back to like, fuck, like I need to figure out how to do my brows again. I don't know why that happens, like what the hell, but no matter if I'm filling my brow in a lot with these or just kind of cleaning up the bottom and just using like a brow mascara, these are amazing and I really love them. So I'm glad I use them a lot. I'm glad that this is like $15, like less than the price of one brow pencil at its original cost. Like I love that. <laughs> and I use the shade medium in these, which would normally be a little bit dark, but I feel like it's not a super dark medium and it just gives me a good amount of definition. So I really like it. Oh my gosh, I thought it'd be fun to sit on the floor and then I forgot your legs just fall asleep. I just fall asleep. The other two brow products that I have are brow mascaras and these are really essential for me when I'm doing my brows because I have blonde hair so I really like tinting my actual brow hairs and that's what these do. This is the CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow. I thought this was getting discontinued. I'm not really sure but the kind of fear of it being less available made me branch out and try other things this year so I just have one. I do have a backup still of this so maybe at one point I'll just like use it up but I don't want to fall back in love that's the thing I don't want to fall back in love with that product so I should just use it up and, and get it done with but I really loved this brow product because it added some fiber so it added some like volume it was a nice light shade sometimes blondes can get a little weird where they're not enough definition to me or they're very like green leaning or very warm leaning and I really like that this one was more of like a taupe color and a little bit dark I feel like some people might think it's a little too intense but I liked that so this was really great and it had some nice hold to it as well. So RIP kind of, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm unsure if it's actually getting discontinued, but I've kind of moved on from this. One of my favorites this year has been the Persona Brow Gel. This one's in warm brown and I do like warm brown for like normal life. Again, I don't know what it's like with my new hair color at the moment, but I've been using the cool brown actually uh, more recently in videos and everyone seems to like that one a lot better. For some reason, warm brown on camera just pulls very warm and kind of looks a little orangey that I feel like doesn't actually come across in person but on camera for some reason the cool brown just looks better and so I've been using that one a lot I feel like I've gone through more than just one tube I'm kind of surprised I feel like the one I'm using currently is like on its last legs I probably should get rid of it but it's one of those products that like until its last dying breath I don't get rid of but um yeah I've really loved the persona brow gel I have a code with them if you're interested I'm an affiliate but but I will say the blonde one is not my favorite. That one pulls a little green to me. I think that they should personally come out with a few more and kind of like target and tailor the colors a little bit better, but I have been enjoying the cool brown and the warm brown depending on what I'm doing. And in terms of texture, I feel like I get a light hold. It's not super strong, but it's nice enough that I keep getting that like fluffy brow look. So I really like that. And I like that it doesn't deposit too much color. Usually a warm brown or a cool brown color is gonna be too dark for me, but I feel like like with the amount of product that gets deposited and the way I can brush it through my brows, it doesn't end up being like an issue. So I really quite like that one. I only have three mascaras in here, which feels weird. I must have just like ditched some others during my declutter maybe, I don't really know. But the three that I have here, the Tarte Man Eater, really quite enjoyed this one, surprisingly. I talked about that as I used it, but look at this brush. Like, what is this? The bristles are so short. Um, it looks gooped up with product. So I'm not gonna lie, that had me worried. Like, I was like, what the absolute hell? But it looked great. It got a lot of mascara on my lashes very fast and I still got some nice separation. It was a bit of a thicker look, but by no means like clumpy and gross. Like, I will not stand for that. <laughs> I will not stand for it. So I actually quite like this nice and black as well. And I really appreciated this just for fast lashes. Another one of my favorites really loved the item beauty lash snack I got this through boxycharm otherwise I probably wouldn't have tried it out but this brush look how cute it is it's tiny but so perfect and I really felt like when I use this I could really get some uh, precision I felt like the bristles on here really 
you know, clung to each lash and like licked it with mascara in a way that I loved. Really did a good job. I got length and some volume and I just thought my lashes looked really separated, almost like false uh, or like lash extensions almost. Like it gave me that kind of a look where they were pretty long, not spidery, but definitely like the lashes felt like a part of the show, you know, and I really quite liked it. I actually picked up a backup of this, so I will be opening it soon. And then last for what's in here, I know I had to have gone through more mascaras than this though. This is from Jane Iredell and it's the Beyond Lash Volumizing Mascara. This one I quite liked as well. They sent this one out to me and I really love the bristles on this one. This is like my go-to kind of shape for bristles or brushes because I like that it's kind of chaotic and I feel like I can kind of wiggle it in my lashes and still get like separation and definition without something too clumpy but also like it gets the shit actually on my lashes. I like my lashes to look if I can like if I could have the perfect lash I just want it to look like Demi Wispies like that's what I want my lashes to look like. I want them to be coated and a little bit more than my actual lashes but I don't like when they're too straight and I don't like when they're too like up. I like them to be kind of swept out and then on the inside kind of swept over. I don't know, almost like they're kind of crossing over a little bit, like almost tangled, but not in a messy way, <laughs> if any of that makes sense. I don't know if I'd repurchase this. I know this is a very expensive mascara, but I did really enjoy it when I had it. So um, I don't know, maybe I would, but I just have so many great mascaras I'm using right now too. So I've just been having a good mascara run lately <laughs> and I'm appreciative because a bad mascara sucks, like really sucks. I realized I haven't talked about this yet, so I'll talk about it here. This is the Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 Replenishing Primer and Setting Spray. I really love this thing. I almost miss it. Like there's a part of me as I'm having it, like, oh, I finished that this year, wow. But I had this a very, very long time and I love the smell of this. This is like a, I call it the coconut hospital smell but it's like coconutty but there is something kind of like medical like it smells a little like you're at the hospital also maybe put a band-aid on like I don't know it's weird but I like it and I always felt like this really took my powdered face and made it look more skin like but I, I think it's weird I'm just realizing uh, when I really loved this product was like before 2019 and when I think of that that's so crazy that doesn't feel like that long ago when I think of those memories but when I think of all the things that have transpired, how much I've aged, how different I am, it's hard to think if I actually would like this. I think of how I did my makeup before the pandemic and I had a younger face at that time. I also was just doing different, th like it's just a different world, <laughs> like quite literally. So um, yeah, anyway, I did love this at one point. Not sure if I still do. I haven't like gone out to rebuy it. I really love the Peach and Lily uh, Glass Skin Veil Mist. That one's really great and does the same kind of thing. It doesn't have a smell to it, but um, I love the sprayer on it. It's really nice and soft. I love my Caudalie one more for skincare. Yeah, those are the ones that really come to mind that do this. I also like MAC Fix Plus, but I haven't used it a ton, a ton, like consistently in a while. So yeah, very weird. Anyway, getting a little <laughs> deeper than just makeup empties, but yeah. And then surprisingly three lip products I have gone through. This was a really proud moment for me. This is from Mecca Cosmetica. I got this when I was in Australia. This was just a tinted lip balm and I had this for a very long time. I went to Australia in early 2019. Like I liked this product. It was a nice tint on my lips, but it was just something I never used. And I don't know, I just put it by my uh, desk this year. And when I was editing videos or doing whatever, I would just reapply it and put it on and I worked through it. So that's kind of nice. I don't know. It's interesting. I'm thinking about it right now. And it's like, I love that I use this up, but I'm like, I just don't feel the same necessarily like compulsion that I have to use things up to feel satisfied. And that's kind of what this was. So it's interesting. Anyway. <laughs> There's that. I also used up a mini of this Huda Beauty uh, Silk Lip Plumping Lip Balm. This is in the shade Blush, but it's like their Silk Balm. Yeah, Silk Balm, so good. If you haven't tried these and you like something just moisturizing and plump on your lips, these are really, really good. I have this spicy one or the one that kind of plumps a little bit more than this one that actually like tingles and I don't love that. I have it in Fuego. Uh, they use like an actual pepper or something in it and you can kind of like taste the pepper. Like it's kind of weirdly savory, like you put hot sauce on your mouth. And so I don't recommend that one, but this one, it was really great. Um, I really loved the way it felt. It reminds me of like 
or is in the same kind of category as the Rowan ones if you've ever tried those. So um, really love this. And then last, I think this is the last empty here. This is mostly a Sam contribution, but this is the Fresh Sugar Citrus Rush Lip Balm. That is the mistake, okay? I bought this because I was excited that they had like a different minty, lemony balm. And I already knew I loved the original, so I was like, let's try something fun. But I really hated this. It was gritty. I had that like fake sweetener taste on my lips, which I freaking hated. So I mostly was just like, here, Sam, <laughs> go use it up. And he did. He did his job well. He used it up. And uh, he even dug in there. And now he needs a new lip balm. But glad to have finished it because I don't really return makeup products. I feel like just because this is my job, like if I just normally bought products and something was this bad or gritty or had more of those issues, I think I would maybe have returned this to be honest because I just feel like it shouldn't be like that. <laughs> I think it's meant to be. I don't think there's anything actually wrong, but I feel like that's something that's like, what the hell? But since I like review products, have the channel, I just, you know, it comes with the territory, I feel like, but I'm glad to have actually used it up. Usually they don't actually get it used up. So that one is gone. I feel like I had definitely more empties in 2022. I see a lot of mascaras. I have a bronzer. I think that it was more my intention to really use things in maybe a different way than I do now. So I think that's a big part of it, but I'm seeing a lot of mascaras mascaras like I just saved a lot more mascaras uh, so I don't even know if it's actually that much different but yeah that is the empties for makeup 2022 uh, not a lot and so if you are someone out there trying to use your makeup up all the way that's one of your intentions one of your goals what you want to be doing with it it takes a while it definitely takes a while and you can see the categories that actually get used up here it's like there aren't blushes okay there aren't really that many color lip products there aren't that many color cosmetics in general there's no eyeshadow no cream eyeshadows powder eyeshadows liquid eyeshadows like it's just usually not what's happening um so just something maybe that could be helpful i don't know but let me tell you the few other things that i've used up that i can start the year off with a fresh empties bin okay super recently i finished up the caudalie beauty elixir this is like bittersweet i love using up products that i love because i'm really getting my use out of it and enjoying it and i love that about it but obviously it's not fun to repurchase but i already had one of these waiting for me so I'm glad I have that ready to go. I just love this mist. I actually, I talked about it earlier. <laughs> this has like a very prominent spa-like smell. So it's like herbal and minty and very refreshing. It kind of wakes me up. So I love using this in my morning skincare routine specifically. Um, and I actually have to be kind of careful that I don't like apply this too much in my eyes because it can burn a little because it's kind of minty, but I love it so much. It's one of the products in my beauty routine that I really enjoy and really like kind of cut of it in a way so love that naturally batiste is in here uh because i love it this is the dry shampoo in the volumizing i feel like i'm in a weird crossroads with my hair because i just dyed it but also i need to cut it and i feel like the length is a little long for me i'm probably going to cut it pretty short coming up like when i get back from arizona start the new year off with a shorter cut but um i do really like this for sopping up all the oil on my scalp but also giving a little bit of volume i've been really enjoying though the little little mini Orbe spray and I think I'm gonna purchase that though just for some texture because sometimes I want volume but I don't need the actual powderiness that comes with this it's great for when my hair is oily but when my hair isn't oily and I just need actual texture it's just kind of like limp and thin and just <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> I feel like the Orbe one gives me that texture and doesn't add like a powdery residue, which is kind of nice. So um, yeah, still love this, but something I thought I would update you on, something a little different. Oh my gosh, I have another like face spray. This is from Sioris maybe. Uh, it's Time is Running Out, the Macadamia Oil and Jojoba Oil Mist. This is one that actually you can see the layers and you can kind of see the yellow oil. So you have to really shake this up when you use it or you'll end up with like a lot of oil at the end. But this was okay. I don't think I would purchase it again because I just don't like shaking it up that much to be honest. And I find like, I don't necessarily need oil. Like girl, I got, I got the oil on lock. So I wasn't really using this for makeup or before makeup. So it's more of a nighttime mist and yeah, 
it was just fine. It took a very long time to use this up. I've been using this since like, I feel like 2020. So glad it's gone and actually used up. I feel like that is an example though of a product that I don't know nowadays if I would even make it to the end of that product because when I think of my time and what I'm testing and what I wanna actually be using, if I'm not testing stuff, if I find something kind of subpar, I'd rather pass that on to someone else and they can use it instead of me kind of, tr you know, trudging through that product. So that's also something kind of interesting and different about empties for me. <laughs> like the stuff I actually use up is very similar to each other because it's stuff I actually like. And so those are things I, I purchase a lot. Are you ready for hand soaps? Let's go. I have tons of the Terracotta Canyon hand soap. I bought a ton of these at the time when this was out because this scent is amazing. This is golden amber desert jasmine and warm sandalwood. It just smells fucking expensive. I'm telling you it's like high-end hotel vibes. Oh, I love it. Sam really likes it too. And I really wish they had this all the time. I wish that they had just like stations where you could fill up your bottles because that is something I just hate about the Bath and Body Works. We go through these so fast. I swear to you, I don't know if we just wash our hands too much. Probably. Like I think we are just like, you know, <laughs> we're washing our hands a lot. So we just run through so many hand soaps and I just hate that. I've talked about that before, but I also feel like, especially in the colder months, the foaming hand soap does dry my hands out and Sam's hands out. So I don't know, I've just kind of like stopped buying. I'm working through my little stash. I actually don't have that many left because again, we go through these so fast, but I do really like my Aesop hand soap. And as much as it is expensive, it's pretty big. And I feel like we don't run through it nearly as fast. And so it's expensive. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like um, sometimes it's not nearly as expensive as I think because of that. But I have like three of those that we used up. This one here is the coconut sandalwood. It has notes of coconut palm, luxurious sandalwood, and warm musk. It was okay, not my favorite. I mean, coconut and sandalwood is a great combination, but sometimes it can be a little basic and I felt like this was a little basic. This hand soap from Bath & Body Works is in the scent smoked caramel and bourbon and it had smoked caramel, aged bourbon, and worn leather. Sounds really decadent and heavy, but it was mostly just kind of sweet. I felt like it was, um, a little almost like cherry sweet going on. I think that was like the bourbon in there, that like boozy note. I didn't love it, so I wouldn't purchase this one again. Oh, I had four of these. We used through four of these, and I think that was all the ones I had left. I bought like 11 of those at one point. <laughs> and I've worked through all of them this year. <laughs> okay, I think the last hand soap, this is the Ghoul Friend one. It came out for Halloween and it's dark strawberries, ghostly peony, and spine chilling citrus. I liked the packaging on it. I thought that was cute, but it was just a fine scent. I didn't even love the scent that much. I mean, it has no woods. It has like florals and fruits and citruses. Like it's not really my style, but it was cute for the time. And uh, I'm glad it's gone because for like Halloween stuff like that, I really do like using it during the year and then moving on. <laughs> I don't think I talked about this in my last empties. This is from Glow Recipe. It's the Watermelon Glow Pink Juice Moisturizer. This is one of Sam and I's favorites. I really like the niacinamide drops as well, the dew drops. Um, that one's pretty good. I feel like I haven't used it in a while though. I've been using my Peach and Lily and really been enjoying that. But this is just like a staple one we kind of go back to. And Sam really likes it. I really like it. It's a nice thin consistency that still adds a lot of moisture. So I could see myself repurchasing at some point. You guys know I really like the Glow Recipe stuff. I either love it or I'm like, what the heck, not worth it. <laughs> but this is one of the ones I think is worth it. I have a fragrance empty in here. I don't know if I'm gonna start just doing fragrance stuff on the fragrance channel. We'll see. Maybe in 2023, I'll figure that out. But I did finish this mini of the Kaoli Vanilla 28 and I really love it. I had a full size waiting. I love these little bottles though. If you're not sure, you get like the cuteness of a bottle, but um, it's still only 10 mil. Vanilla 28 is just a really great classic kind of vanilla scent. It's very linear in that it just is kind of the one smell. It doesn't change a ton throughout the wear time on it. It's sweet, a little bit warm, not too powdery and floral though either. It's just a nice vanilla. If you haven't smelled it and you like vanillas, you need to try this one. I have a beauty blender cleanser in here. This is the solid one. I really like the solid for the brushes because you can just swirl your brush in here and then get to cleaning. I've really been trying to take care of my brushes and trying to clean them more. I feel like with vlogmas and kind of the last two months of the year, it's been kind of a whirlwind, but I am excited, you know, in 2023 to continue with actually cleaning my brushes. It feels so good to have clean brushes and the Beauty Blender cleanser to me is just one of the best cleansers out there, especially to the liquid for the sponges. It is the best to me. Like I can get everything out. I can make a sponge almost look brand new and clean, which is like saying something. So I know a lot of people have like their own methods for cleaning brushes, cleaning sponges, 
methods. Some people use Dawn dish soap, some people use Castile soap, like there's tons of different methods, but I just find for me, the best is the Beauty Blender. It really cuts through waxy products, cream products, like gets that kind of oily grime out and actually breaks that down. And that's what I really like about it. So um, yeah, I used up one of those. I think the last things I have are some candles. I think again, these might move over to the fragrance channel, we'll see. But I finished up Cider Lane. This one I really love. It's like a caramel apple scent. The notes are bourbon glazed apples, maple sugar, creamy vanilla. Mmm. I thought that this one wasn't smelling very good, but I feel like as I burned the candle more and more, the projection was better. So this is just one of my all time favorites. Perfect around fall time, really gives me a lot of memories. It's so interesting though, how fall scents, like I really only want to smell them during fall. Like otherwise I'm like, oh, it's like interesting. Not really what I'm feeling right now. So I'm glad I burned through that. I think I have another one, but that'll probably get burned next year. This next one is Fresh Balsam. I love a pine tree scent so much. And this one's really good. I actually opted out of getting my Times Fraser Fur candle this year. That's like one of my favorite pine tree scents, but I felt like this was sufficing, you know, and that candle's really expensive. So I just stuck to these. This has woodland balsam, crisp eucalyptus, fir branches, and cedar wood. And it's just the perfect pine tree scent. It has enough sweetness, but that just fresh kind of aromatic smell smell. It's so good. This was one I just kind of finished up, had like one more burn left in it, Summer Boardwalk. I do really love this. I was loving this all during summer, but it's another one that like just doesn't smell necessarily like the best right now, but I can see during summer really enjoying it again. This has notes of caramel glazed popcorn. It is that kind of salty sweet popcorn smell warm taffy apples, salty sweet cream. <laughs> so it's a strong one. This is one of the ones from Bath and Body Works that really like, you know, engulfs your whole house. Everyone can smell it. It's very strong. It's kind of thick in the air and you either like that or you don't. Like, you know, if I'm describing this, you're either like, hell yeah, or you're like, what the fuck? No, <laughs> but I like it. It's very good. Okay, I think this might be the last one. This one is leaves from Bath and Body Works. They're all Bath and Body Works right now. I love leaves and it's interesting because leaves used to not be one of my favorites because it was so cinnamon heavy, so spicy. And I've really started to enjoy cinnamon scents. And this one was great. I loved this around the holidays, like around Thanksgiving. And when I didn't want something super sweet and like gooey, like I love that scent. A lot of the times really cozy to me, but when I didn't want that, but I still wanted a cozy feeling, this one was so perfect. So I actually repurchased this. This has notes of crisp red apple, golden nectar, warm clove spice. I mean, I smell the apple in here, but it is to me, just like overwhelmingly spicy. <laughs> like that is a lot of it. And so usually it takes me a while to go through leaves. Like I can have a leaves candle that I burn for like two, even three years, like a couple burns, you know, throughout the season. I actually burned through this one pretty fast and repurchased. So really love that. And I'm going to leave the empties video here. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was just kind of like a long one just talking chatting but i hope you guys enjoyed it i'd love to know if you have any like makeup empties you're particularly proud of this year i know it's not necessarily what i do as much but i know it can feel really exciting to use up some makeup anyway thank you so much for being here i hope you have an amazing day and i'll see you in the next one bye guys